All right, I'm going to do a, uh, not a tutorial, but a little how-to sort of thing, what I do when I get a guitar and the things I go through and check and set up to just make it playable, hopefully. Um, no, not an expert. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, but I know my skills are only as good as they are. And uh, anyways, this is a, uh, uh, a Chinese, this is a Chinese-made Squire Affinity Telecaster, as you can see right there. And this is an old one. Well, I mean old <laughs> compared to most things these days. But this is old. This is a made in 1997. Uh, and made in China, right? Apparently these have the right thickness of the Telecaster body they should have and they're made of alder like and it's a heavy Fairly heavy guitar if I'm gonna find out see if that's one piece of wood or whether it's like a whole bunch put together so anyways, it's all you know, it's all kind of out of whack because the Somebody looks like somebody just made the bridge a nice straight line and that's not how it's supposed to go You're supposed to have staggered saddles up you know, longer and shorter and it's usually a pretty s similar pattern and it makes the intonation proper on the guitar so when you tune it and you play it it's not allowed to tune um, so that has to be set up properly and just do that with a tuner and by ear as well so it's got some replacement rubber knobs these are off uh, Ibanez they're a nice soft rubber three-way switch was really bent I kind of bent that back but you can see it still sits still sits a little bit funky and it's scratchy and cuts in and out, and so does the jack. The input jack is probably got stretched or the wire is loose. Very common problem, the wire gets, the jack gets loose and then it starts to spin and the wires get pulled out. Extremely common. <clears throat> and we have a sticker here to get rid of. And I'll be using some of this really cool stuff all through the thing. I, all through my little video I use the Dr. Duck's Deluxe. Axe Wax, it's a great product, it's great for getting things off, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, it's great for making things really shine up, it takes off all the finger, fingerprints and the grunge. And... Yeah, we'll find out. And of course, there's things like, you know, the machine heads are not that great on... Uh, machine heads are not that great on this kind of uh, cheaper guitar. Uh, they cheap out on the machine heads, they cheap out of the pickups. and Hopefully they didn't cheap out too, too much with the, you know, getting the neck and all that. Um, there's another thing, the neck bolts are usually loose on guitars, uh, strap buttons, all kinds of things. So I generally take the whole guitar apart, um, play it a bit before I take it apart so I know what it was like before I, before I took it apart. And rosewood, I don't know if that's real rosewood or not, 97, 1997. It could be real rosewood, not positive. And we got the usual sort of if you can see that or not, there's some fretware in there. The usual cowboy chords and the A, B's, D's, C's, uh, the cowboy chords. Um, and as you can see, lots of grunge on the fingerboard, so clean all of that off. It's got a few little mix bands. I mean, it is what it is. It's a Chinese Telecaster, so quality is never usually that good but I'm gonna see what I can do with it see if I can fix it up make it play a bit better and if I don't like it <clears throat> I don't want to keep it I will uh, sell it and I paid 120 for it plus uh, tax so that's probably you know probably too much who knows but in pieces and in parts you could get 100 for the neck probably and whatever if you sold it in parts but if I don't like it I'll just sell it and get my money back uh, try and make it play as good as I can so we'll see how it goes greatest tools ever invented was the string winder. You used to have to sit there and string one by one, put your strings on and use your fingers and go uh, 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 about 20 or 30 times. <laughs> so these are great. So the first thing I like to do is loosen off all the strings. So that they're loose and you just loosen them off one at a time. I usually go from the thicker and then go up to the thinner just to release the tension sort of at the same time. There's no big shock on the neck or anything. Not, again, is it that important on a Chinese guitar? I don't know. But on all my guitars, I guess it's just habit, and that's what I do. I don't just cut them. 
I also don't want to get a string in the eye, so loosen them all off, and when they're all off, I'm going to cut them and take the strings off and pull them out one by one through the saddle, and then probably take the neck off, so I'll come back when I'm ready to do that. Now that I've loosened all the tension off on the strings, now I'll grab my cutters and cut them once at a time, whatever, you can cut as many as you want, but for me, I just, whatever, I just do it the way I do it. Um, to avoid any spring back, hopefully. These strings hurt, you know, you get them stuck in your finger, whatever, it hurts, and then it bleeds for a while, so. Okay, I'm gonna get the rest of these off, you know, peel them all off the headstock, take all that off, and then I'll uh, start again. Yeah, you got all the strings off, and then you can see, like, how dirty it really is, and you know, all the, there's just so much, it gets so dirty. Hand gunk, grease, dust, it all mixes up, makes everything dirty on the guitar, so. Uh, I'm checking the machine has these are actually really tight which is amazing because they're usually like that one's loose you can see it kind of shaking there but the rest of these are really tight which is amazing because for you know a 20 22 year old guitar they're usually pretty loose that one's yeah a bit loose so anyways the problem I have with the string was popping off and all kinds of things so I might have to put another string tree on here I got a bunch of these lying around. I'll put, I'll probably put one here for those other two strings. I'll do that when I got the strings on. Clean up the little slots in the nut. Clean up the fretboard. Fringy, fringy. The Doctor Duck's wax takes all that stuff off. It takes all that grunge off. You put a thin layer on and use a cloth. And you might have to use your fingernail, but it all works and it's good. Needs to be cleaned up. I'm gonna loosen the neck, undo all the, the neck, undo the neck bolts, take the neck off, and have a look and see. There's usually a serial number in there, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Sometimes you find interesting things, uh, but I want to make sure it's uh, tight. I'll retighten it, and I want to look at the neck when it's off. And um, might need a shim underneath the front of the neck, a little piece of paper or cardboard under the front to, to move the neck back a bit, so I can raise the bridge saddles because they get hurts when you're raising, resting on the bridge saddle and the screws sticking out, the adjustment screws. You put your hand on that when you're playing, it kind of hurts. Ah! <laughs> but anyways, I'll be back. This again, while the strings are still up, I mean, you can really get in there and you can see if it'll focus, you know, um, what the frets look like, if there's any wear on there. Because if there's wear on the frets and they start to get really bad, that's when you get guitar that sounds out of tune even though it's in tune and the, the frets just kind of rattle and buzz. It almost look like real perloid inlays, I'm not sure. They're, well, the cheap guitars are usually, you know, cheap. So, um, I'll have a close-up look at those. Anyways, the frets aren't bad, but I gotta clean this all up with a bit of steel wool and some gunk remover as in the Dr. Ducks Deluxe Wax, you know. Clean all the polish. I'm gonna polish. Clean all the polish. Polish all the, the pickups and everything. Get all that that grunge off of there. I'm gonna take the pick card off. See what's under there. Take this off. Clean all the pots and the switch, and fix the jack. It's got the wrong jack on. It's like a Les Paul jack. Should have a, a Telecaster on there. But let's see. I'll see if I have one kicking around. And maybe I got some knobs that'll fit. These are kind of cool though. They're, soft rubber and you can grab it with one finger and then there's a little indentation on top for 10. There you go. Three-way position. And you can see the bottom of the dirt on the, on the saddles. A lot of those little screws end up having dirt and stuff in there, so you have to pick it out with a little pick or a toothpick or something like that to get enough dirt out of there to, to get the Allen wrench in to adjust. But anyways, I clean all that, I get all the dirt out of here and oil all the springs and oil the screws, oil everything with a precision oiler that I've had, oh dear, almost empty, uh oh. There's a bit in there, but I've had this for like 10, 10 years. So I'll be using that as well. Toothbrushes are coming great when you get it all, get some cleaner on there and you can clean stuff. All kinds of cool stuff, tricks, whatever. And uh, yeah, so I'll be back. So the neck 
uh, I got the neck off. I should, maybe I should have filmed that, but no big deal. You know, you take the four screws out, kind of loosen them one at a time, loosen them off. Don't just rip one out and then the next one, like loosen them off four at a time and then take them off. And it's cool what you find sometimes because that neck plate says uh, N7, which means it's a 97. Well, that's what I thought. But then you look at the date. Look at the date on the neck, and it's a 98. So they used, uh, and I can't see, but there's also the, in here it says April. I can't really read that other date, but it's probably 98 as well. So they just used a 97 neck plate on it. And that wood sure looks like it's solid alder to me, or at least solid, whatever it is. I'm gonna take the, this off. But yeah, I mean, that's not. Okay, so the screws are out of the neck. Let's see what we got under this pick guard. Ooh, she's pretty tight. <laughs> Should come up, but she's stuck down. There you go, a bit of tape on there holding it on. No date or anything on the back. Sometimes a date will be on the back of the pick guard, but usually a fender thing. Not the cheaper stuff, but you can see that's pretty skanky. But we'll uh, clean it up. One ply, one, one ply pick guard. And I don't know Telly's that well, the history, but I think that's original. There's your little pick up there. See how she bounces on the screws. So I can raise that up if I need to, but you know, it sucks. You gotta take the pick guard off to do it, but it's all doable. And I'm gonna take this off and this off just so I can get underneath and get all the grunge out from underneath and then I can clean this. Oh my God, look at that. Look at the grunge, the grunge that gets in there. So, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I don't mind worn things. I like it when it's worn and beat up to a point, but I don't like dirt and gray, green, <laughs> dirt and grime and grease and hair and all that because of skin, because whatever, it's all just yuck. So, anyways, sticky tape. Interesting. Just to hold the pick guard there while they put the screws in. I don't know. Windy factory? Who knows? neck pocket you can see they clean the oops <laughs> they clean the paint off in the neck pocket and stuff but yeah it's uh i should see how much this sucker weighs hmm all right back in a bit screws are out of the bridge and the control plate so let's have a look we'll lift up the bridge oop careful don't want to pull those wires too tight not a lot of room on there. We got some little dust bunny in there, but the number 14 on the body. It's all painted though, nice. Oh, I see the pickup underneath, nothing special, but whatever. And control cavity, it's a nice big switch, thick switch, and it's got big pots in here, so I wonder, yeah, but they're 500K. So, I mean, it works, but they're supposed to be 250K from what I understand for singles. Single coil, that's a nice switch. I'd say it's the factory wiring and everything, but I gotta get some contact spray cleaner into those and because they're a little bit scratchy, so. Corrosion in there, but 500K pots, yeah. And to my knowledge, anyway, they're, they're, they should be 250. Again, I know, I'm, that's a nice looking piece of wood under there, I'm telling you. Um, I'm not a, a technician, but I know that I'm prone to remember is that there's more brightness, is it? Or no, there's less brightness on the 250Ks because um, the single coils are so bright. Um, so the 250K right, takes off the brightness and the 500K is better for humbuckers because they're not as bright. As far as I understand, anyways, don't quote me. And uh, I noticed this is cool. Some guys will take their thing and turn it around. Like that. <laughs> They'll take their control thing and turn around like that. So you got your volume right here for volume swells. And then you just change, uh, you know, your pickup down here. So as long as there's enough room, wire. Uh, and again, that is pretty nice wiring. I mean, it did a good job. For Chinese. I'd like to see this body just natural too though. Right, so now I'm just gonna do a bunch of cleaning. So I'm not really gonna watch that, but I take the, I take a damp cloth with uh, damp with Dr. Ducks on it and 
clean the body off, clean all this stuff here. And, but I can't keep the video running for all that. So once I clean everything, I'll show you. And then we'll put the neck back on. There was no shim in here. I'm gonna put a little piece of cardboard, very small piece of business card, something like that underneath. Doesn't interfere with the screws, whatever. And that, that'll tilt the neck a bit more so that I can raise the saddles so we don't have them sticking up and hurting. It's uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, that kind of thing. And then I'm gonna clean the neck as well, get that grunge off of there. And put it all back together, tighten it up, put some strings on it. We'll see how she, uh, see how she plays. Oh, and I gotta fix the jack. Gotta fix this jack too. The wiring's probably loose or the prong might be bent over. So it's not making the right contact, but it's cutting in and out. And that's the wrong jack. You can see how the screws are, you know, there's one screw here that's sticking up. And uh, yeah, just whatever. I'll fix it up <clears throat> and uh, I'll let you know. Say, <clears throat> as I was saying, I've got my cloth and this is like permanently soaked in the Dr. Duck's Axe Wax and whatever they call it. It's really good though. This stuff is great. I've been using it for decades now. It's really good. <clears throat> um, so it, you know what I mean. If it gets, if it tends to dry out a little bit, I put some more on it. But as you can see, I'm getting rid of all the the lines. There's that permanent line around where you take things off because that's just dirt and grease, right? So once you use this, it literally just you know there it takes everything away. And then when this is all done, I use a softer cloth and polish everything up. Try and get the a little bit of residue off but it, it still it keeps everything clean and, and shiny so anyway, I can't do this forever so I'm gonna just clean everything and I'll let you know later how it goes <laughs> I'm in a way here so yeah I've got my rag I use that and then you know what I had to get I decided I just couldn't clean everything and then not clean under this bridge because you can't get there unless you take the saddles off so I'm taking the saddles off one by time one by <laughs> one and making sure they go over there and I know what order they go in no big deal so I gotta Reset the heights and the intonations and everything anyway, but good to just keep them in the same order if you can. So yeah, I gotta get all this grunge out of here, so I'm gonna take these off. And uh, as you can see, it's cleaning up. And uh, it'll look good when it's done, for sure. Oh, see you in a bit. All right, there we go. Nice clean bridge. I cleaned that all up, put it back together, cleaned up the plate over here. I gave it the, the uh, pots underneath a good spray on the switch, so hopefully those won't be staticky at all. Just gonna finish cleaning everything and get that sticker off the end and then uh, put some more together. All right, neck is cleaned up as good as I can do it for now, or as I wanna do it for now, but I got most of the grunge off, and pretty cleaned up. It could be cleaner, obviously, but the danger is cleaning too much for a guitar that might just turn out to play no good. So it can be a waste, uh, but I, I clean it up decently anyway, you know? And if not, it's nice and clean for the next person that owns it, owns it if I don't decide to keep it. All right, fixing up the jack down before I put the neck back on. And there's the reason the jack was cutting in and out because the wires were just put onto the terminals. See that there is. Sometimes it just doesn't like to zoom in and even focus, but both the wires, the white and the black, were just put on the terminals and not soldered. So I'm gonna solder those on and put the neck back on. Hopefully get some strings on and get some noise out of this thing. Ah. So everything's cleaned up, uh, neck is attached to the body again, screws put in, you know, nice and tight, and uh, that's it, all cleaned up. I'm going to put strings on it, and we'll see how it goes from there. All done, and it is what I thought it might be, or feared it might be, it's pretty junky. It's Chinese, pretty much learned to expect that from all of their stuff, it's, it's not well made. The body might be great, you could probably put a good neck on this and the body would be fine. But the neck, you know, the frets are all over the place and bumpy and, uh, you know, I mean, is it worth putting time into the fret level of frets and stuff like that? Probably not. Good for a beginner or, yeah, take the take the uh, body and use that for a better guitar, but really, waste of strings. <laughs> not that bad, but seriously, yeah. Chinese, there you go. Okay, so I'm back. <clears throat> Here is the 1997-98 uh, Chinese Telecaster Squire uh, 
what do I call this? Squire Tele Affinity series. So, you know, made by license, under license in China. Fender's uh, cheaper guitars, <clears throat> but really. So unplugged. You know, I messed around with the intonation the best I could and all that. I'm still finding it kind of iffy. Um, so this is unplugged, you know. Kind of iffy down there. All in how you play, too. So, lots of fret buzz or slap, whatever you want to call it, because to get the action low, you know, without buzzing is almost impossible for me anyway. I'm not a super expert. I just do what I've been doing for a couple decades and hundreds of guitars. So do the best I can. Some of them play just excellently. You put the strings on them and you set it, you know, and that's it. Adjust the neck a bit if you have to. It's because the quality of the guitar, the cheaper guitar is just the, the, the frets aren't level and they stick out on the ends. Those can be filed down. I mean, sure, it can all be done, but the way it is, hey, I mean, it's not bad. You know, um, probably not going to be the best guitar for super clean, but uh, anyways, it's all cleaned up. I did all clean all the electronics, everything works, so I'm going to turn the amp on and keep the amp off because it's got a fan in it that's that's uh, noisy, but it's a PV Blues Classic with the 15-inch uh, uh, speaker in it, tweed, nice and dirty. <laughs> well, I mean, it's clean and it's dirty, but it's physically dirty because there's dust on the top. Uh-oh. Um, so yeah, but I'm going to turn that on. We'll try a bit of clean, a bit of dirty and see how it goes. It'll take a second to, to warm right up. Uh-oh, my media card is almost full. All right, so I had to delete some files on my media card, but we're back and... Uh, so here it is, kind of clean. Well, not kind of, but real clean. But like I was saying, you know, it's it, because the frets aren't level and stuff. And I don't know, maybe I'm not setting it up right, but I usually get good results. So um, it just there's so much. And it's okay, you know, it's usable. Middle pickup, or you know, two pickups. Somebody might be able to set it up better than me, or, or just a quick fret dress leveling, you know, that kind of thing would, would definitely help. Uh, better machine heads. Hey, you know, other than that, it's a telly. Some distortion. Ah. It's a nice bright telly. Thank you. 
Pickup, there's only two pickups. <laughs> it's the med middle position. Aha, medium rare. What oh, blew that one? So, I mean, I love Tom Petty, but um, not bad, you know. <laughs> Tellies are always going to have that snappy kind of sound, but, you know, too much fret. Still cool. Don't play enough. stays in tune. And that's the, the neck pickup. Quite versatile. Middle position. Neck. Or bridge, sorry. Oh, 
I'm just getting some feedback there. If that happens a bit louder. <laughs> So I'm thinking the quality was way better back in 96, 7, 8, that kind of thing, <clears throat> than they are now. Because for sure they don't have the thickness of the body now, and they're made of, like, probably balsa wood. Um, anyways, you know, overall, 120 bucks. What the heck, if you put another 150 bucks into it, machine heads, you know, um, maybe, a, maybe a better pickup, but still, all in all, it's not super noisy, sounds pretty good. All in all, what the heck, eh? A little bit of buzz there, but... I think it's cool. Pawn shop guitar, $120 Canadian plus tax, of course. Jeez. So you'd count that or not, but in the end it'd be about $140. Bucks. Set of strings, five bucks. A couple hours in total, cleaning, setting up. Solid body, probably look real nice without the black on it. I'm more of a natural finish kind of guy, as you can see by my strat up in the background there. Ooh, up there. <laughs> That's my 97 natural strat. I'll show you that. Needs needs fret work real bad. I got some other projects too. I got a whole bunch of projects. One by one. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.